Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, August 20th, 2018. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Weather Service, the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, and your local emergency management officials for the latest information. Well, we're talking about the Pacific today and Hurricane Lane, a powerful major hurricane with maximum winds of about 125 miles per hour, as measured by Hurricane Hunter aircraft earlier this evening. This is a storm that is now forecast to move far enough north to be too close for comfort to the state of Hawaii, and all of these islands could potentially receive impacts from this storm. Uh, even if it does not make direct landfall, the outskirts of the storm could very well impact some or all of these islands later this week, and so we are now watching carefully the progress of this system and folks should be monitoring the storm and preparing accordingly for what could be a rare uh, hurricane impact to the state. If we take a close look at Lane this evening, we can see that the eye uh, is very well defined here. It was not always so today. Earlier this morning and last night, it was a little obscured and there was some asymmetric convective bursting going on in the western eye wall, which seemed to be symptomatic of some mid-level shear down near the 400 millibar level or so. And this may be abating slightly this evening as we can see the bursts have uh, calmed down a little bit and are becoming more symmetric about the eye. We can see this a little bit better on the infrared satellite image you can see the eye clearing out and turning gray here, which means that the temperature is warming, clouds are clearing, and these uh, white bursts that, of convection that you could see earlier today on the west side are subsiding a little bit, and you can see a little more structured ring-like uh, formation uh, marking the eye wall and what is likely a secondary eye wall here at the end of the loop. You can actually see two concentric bands here, and uh, this shows up very well on the microwave pass from 6 p.m. central time showing the inner primary eye wall, which is actually not closed according to this pass, and a uh, nice looping band almost closed around it. This is starting to form those concentric rings that we call uh, double eye walls. Uh, this indicates that an eye wall replacement cycle is likely about to occur. What that is is uh, this large band closes off, becomes a new eye wall, and starts to shrink as this inner one, what used to be the primary eye wall, dissipates, this new larger one contracts and takes over once the inner one dies, and then it's left with a single eye wall again. What this normally entails, importantly, is that the storm usually weakens a little bit during the process uh, and then strengthens after the process completes. But more importantly, the wind field tends to expand, so the storm tends to get a little bit larger when this happens. So it's normally not a great thing, especially for a situation like this, because if the storm is expected to pass south of the islands, even if there's no direct landfall, the larger the circulation, the more impacts for a longer time could impact some of the islands. So this is going to become very important uh, as we watch it uh, tonight and tomorrow. If we look at the uh, water vapor imagery, uh, we'll see that it's in an environment of uh, relatively decent conditions. We have a, an upper level ridge aloft, very nice outflow on the north side. As I mentioned, there is some mid-level shear, at least uh, there are symptoms of it uh, in the circulation, but overall shear is fairly light in a deep layer sense, and it won't be until it hits this wall of southwesterly winds here uh, that it will likely begin encountering unfavorable environmental conditions. Water is warm along the path that it is expected to take as it starts curving more toward the north in a couple of days, and uh, again, really, it will be this shear uh, over to the south and southwest of Kauai uh, that will likely start weakening the hurricane eventually. Uh, here's the recon uh, aircraft observations from earlier this evening showing a pressure steady in the mid 960s. This has been true for about a day now and we'll see if the plane coming in later this evening and early tomorrow morning finds that the storm has strengthened at all given that the eye is a little bit better to find now or if it's starting to weaken a bit to do the eye wall replacement cycle. Either way uh, the storm is a powerful one and winds again have been a maximum at about 125 miles per hour as these planes have gone in and out and it's unlikely to weaken significantly over the the next day or so. If we look at uh, the track forecast for this, uh, this is now uh, been what has changed in the last few days. Previously, this storm was expected to, to skirt like a Hurricane Hector a few weeks ago off to the south, not too close to the state, uh, but now the models are starting to pick up on something that could allow it to come a little bit farther north. This is the GFS 500 millibar pattern valid on Tuesday afternoon. This is where Lane is. And uh, what we see here is, uh, although it's not outlined very well, there is a looping banana-shaped ridge like this to the north of the storm. So this is high pressure all through here, and this is what has been driving the storm basically west or west-northwestward 
for the last couple of days. The problem is that this part of the ridge right here is a bit weak and has been getting weaker on subsequent forecasts. So by the time we get out to Wednesday, what we have is Lane sitting here south southeast of the Big Island. And when you look for the ridge, here's the ridge that was steering it right here. Um, but there's really not much ridging up here. There's really not a lot going on. So as far as steering influences go, this is all very light winds here. And the main steering influence on the storm becomes the ridge that it was south of, but is now west of. And so this flow is now starting to push the storm more toward the north. So on the GFS here, this is tugging lane more toward the Big Island. And so when we get out to Thursday, you can see it's coming up uh, north-northwest. And then by Friday, you can see it's actually interacting directly with the Big Island and Maui. And uh, this is the easternmost solution uh, of some of the models. Uh, other models like the European uh, break down the ridge a little bit later and take uh, lane a little bit farther south such that by Friday you can see it's starting to gently curve up toward Kauai and then on the European what actually happens is because the storm is weakening due to the increased wind shear that I talked about south of Kauai since the vortex is weakening it's feeling steering currents at a lower level of the atmosphere and so all these trade winds through here out of the east start pushing the storm back toward the west as it weakens and so it actually avoids a direct landfall on the European but that would depend on exactly how quickly the storm weakens and there could still be rainfall in a scenario like that anyway which can be very detrimental due to flooding. So there are a couple of solutions here, a little bit of uncertainty still. Uh, so these models are not quite in agreement on what's going to happen. The official forecast is sort of a blend of everything, and you can see it showing kind of a gentle curvature up toward the northwest, still to the south of the state. However, this is more than close enough to bring adverse conditions uh, to these mountainous islands, which can collect a lot of rainfall due to the volcanic terrain, and therefore mudslides and flooding can be a big problem, even if the winds do not become a problem and certainly the winds uh, could be strong as well even with an offshore track we can see that there are significant probabilities yellow is greater than 30 percent chance of tropical storm force winds impacting uh, a given location that's winds at about 40 miles per hour or stronger and you can see the timing here we could see adverse conditions arrive near the big island as soon as wednesday night and thursday morning is the most likely time of arrival on the current forecast track if those winds are realized. So you can see on the official forecast here that it does show weakening, a powerful major hurricane here, weakening a little bit as it turns northwest and uh, weakening still by day five. This is more like the European solution where it runs into that wind shear we were talking about earlier, all this southwesterly flow. The hurricane comes into that, it likely weakens. Uh, but there are more wrinkles here. Because it's Hawaii, uh, we could also have a situation where the storm comes up farther to the east like the GFS and in this case it would encounter less wind shear from the environment however the entanglement with the Big Islands topography and Maui's topography could wreak a little bit of havoc with the storm at least in terms of its wind intensity and there are lots of physical processes at play that could make this a little strange just as one example you can see uh, the flow out of the trade winds here you can see how it actually physically gets blocked and around both sides of the big island this does some weird things to this pocket right here there's dynamic low pressure high pressure mesozones on this side it can drag the vortex different directions at different altitudes which can cause a sort of wind shear on the vortex even if actual wind shear from the environment is low so a track too close to the big island and uh, you might actually see the core ripped up a fair bit as it approaches that can be some good news in the sense that if it tries to make a direct pass at some of these uh, these islands in the center of the state or the western part of the state it may weaken substantially just due to topographical interaction. However, again, water may be the bigger problem here anyway. And so even a track offshore or a track up here that weakens the storm significantly would still result in the potential for dangerous flooding. So this is going to be something to take seriously as it approaches and make sure you're prepared for those eventualities. We'll continue to keep a close eye on Lane. I'll have updates if I have time over the next couple of days. Stay safe. Stay tuned to the National Weather Service Honolulu and the Central Pacific Hurricane Center for the latest and best information on this storm. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.